by plugging your vehicle into the car. No, not into the car, into the caravan, you donut. Gonna sneeze. <gasps> <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Dougal. On the 18th of November 2020, the UK government announced it was to bring forward the end of the sale of new petrol and diesel cars and vans to the year 2030. What does this mean for the leisure vehicle industry? Is this the end of the road for caravanning and motorhoming as we know it? And will camper vans be the only way forward? Let's study a few facts and find out for ourselves. Some people are already seeing the recent announcement as the death knell for caravans and motorhomes. Well, all I can say to that is, don't panic. Don't panic! Right. Don't, don't panic, you're all right! We will all be fine, as I'm about to explain. However, we will need to change our behaviours. That includes you, me, the site operators, the dealers, and especially the caravan and motorhome manufacturers. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Andrew, a lifelong caravanner, and I've been working in caravan and motorhome journalism for over 20 years, an ex-tow car tester for Caravan Magazine, and currently a driving judge for the Caravan and Motorhome Club Tow Car of the Year Awards. It's a role I've enjoyed for many years. This role in particular allows me the privilege of many interesting conversations with some of the best automotive journalists and technical experts in the field. In this video, we're going to be concentrating more on EVs rather than hybrids, which are, of course, a great transitional step into the world of electric vehicles. But what we're going to look at is the effect of the government announcement on camper vans and motorhomes, on caravans, on membership organisations and sites, and also what it means for the industry, for the manufacturing industry, what caravan and moto manufacturers are going to need to do in order to stay in business. And finally, we're going to look at the effect on you and me, what we're going to need to do, how we might have to change our touring behaviours. But the main thing is, is just not to panic. There is no need to panic. So we're going to start off and we're going to look at the effect of that announcement on camper vans, and motorhomes. Until now, no major leisure vehicle manufacturer has put an electric van conversion into full production. Some smaller converters have done so with the smaller electric vans that are currently available, like Sussex Camper Vans, who have developed the Nissan ENV200 all-electric camper van. Until now, they've never been hugely popular because the smaller vans have been limited by the cabin space and until recently quite a poor range because they've been developed from small vans designed to potter around big cities doing deliveries. In 2021, all that is about to change. Some new, larger electric vans are just about to come onto the market. In particular, the Fiat e Ducato, this will offer a claimed range of up to 148 miles on the open road, 192 miles in the city, and Fiat claimed that the larger 79 kilowatt hour battery will charge from 0 to 80% in just 30 minutes using a 50 kilowatt DC rapid charger. At the moment, the purchase price is still a bit of an issue, with prices for the 47 kilowatt hour version starting at almost £48,000 plus VAT. So you're adding about 25 to 30 grand to the price of a regular Ducato based motorhome, which is still a huge improvement on the €150,000 premium on the all electric Ducato based motorhome that I drove in Dusseldorf last year. And do remember that you have to offset these higher purchase prices against lower running costs for the entire lifetime of the vehicle. Hot on the e Ducato's heels will come the Volkswagen ID Buzz, which will probably be the world's first purpose-built electric camper van designed from the wheels up.
Now let's talk about caravans and tow cars. Up until now there's been a very limited choice of tow cars and any EV that can tow has generally been in the executive price bracket, i.e. over £50,000. The Tesla Model X, for example, can tow 2,250 kilos, but it starts at around £75,000 after tax incentives. The Audi e-tron can tow 1,800 kilos, but it starts at around 60 k I've been lucky enough to tow a caravan with an EV. It was for the Caravan and Motorhome Club Tow Car of the Year Awards, a Jaguar I-Pace towing a 750 kilo caravan. It was amazing. Of the affordable EVs around at the moment, and by affordable, I mean under 40,000 pounds, nothing is currently suitable to tow. So why is that? In smaller and more affordable EVs, the batteries add extra weight, which is great for towing stability, but that added weight takes components such as the drivetrain to their limit. To increase the durability of these components to allow towing would mean increasing the weight of the car, which of course would have the unwanted effects of increasing the price and decreasing the range. All that is about to change though. In 2021, some exciting new EVs are coming onto the market. They can tow a caravan and they're under 40K. Among them is the Skoda Enyaq IV80. The Enyaq IV80 has an estimated solo range of over 300 miles and the claimed ability to charge from 5 to 80% in just 38 minutes. Its curb weight is a shade over 2,000 kilos. Like its VW stablemate, the ID4, it will be able to tow 1,000 kilos. Right now, the choice of mainstream UK produced caravans that the Enyaq and the ID4 can tow is massively limited. In fact, there are only two the Bailey Discovery D4 2, which is a couple's van, or the Eldis Explore 304, which is ideal for a small young family, but it cannot be loaded to its full empty PLM of 1,043 kilos. You will have to be careful not to exceed 1,000 kilos. You might also consider the Swift Base Camp 2, but its MRO of 932 kilos would only give you a 68 kilo payload. There are some honourable mentions to make of smaller, imported brands whose caravans will also be suitable, namely Freedom Caravans, and of course small teardrops such as the GoPod or the Funky Tab 320. Do you remember that Sterkerman Easy 350cp that I saw in Dusseldorf this year? It had a double bed, a dinette, a washroom and a kitchen and all with an empty PLM of 850 kilos. It can be done. Site operators are constrained by the electrical supply to the site, especially in rural areas. If you can imagine an electrical cable like a water pipe, they carry a finite amount of energy dependent on their size, and to replace hundreds of miles of cable may be cost prohibitive. EV charging points are being installed into some sites as they are being newly built or redeveloped, such as Love to Stay in Shropshire or Caton Village Caravan and Motorhome Club site. However, don't forget that the future might not belong exclusively to EVs. Hydrogen tech is also on the up and the UK government is aiming to produce 5 gigawatts of low carbon hydrogen for industry homes and transport by 2030. If EV tech becomes second to hydrogen tech, all that money invested in EV charging points could be conceived as a waste of money. Both the Caravan and Motorhome Club and the Camping and Caravanning Club support EV charging by plugging your car into the caravan. Now there might be an additional charge for this. At the time of filming, the Caravan and Motorhome Club charge £8 per day in order to do this to make things fair for everybody. Using the example of our Skoda Enyaq IV80, which has an 82 kilowatt hour battery, this would take about 28 hours to charge to 80% if you plug it into the 13 amp socket in the caravan. You have to remember that you don't need to sit on site and wait for the car to fully charge to go out. A trip to the supermarket or local cafe will give you an hour on a fast charger which will massively boost the battery power.
most private operators and both major clubs are also ahead of the game by increasing their offering of glamping alternatives to caravanning. This means you can still tour and use campsites with your EV without even needing to worry about towing anything. So how will this affect our touring? Well, touring with an EV will be different because we're going to have to slow down and use every opportunity we can to charge our vehicles and then use the site supply to top up the charge overnight. However, for example, my trip from here in the Outer Hebrides down to Dover won't be that different. There'll just be a couple of extra stops, as I'll explain in, for example, day one of going from North Uist to Glasgow. So normally, on the first day of my three-day drive to Kent, I'd leave North Uist and head to Strathclyde Country Park Caravan and Motorhome Club site near Glasgow. It's 16 miles from my house to the ferry. I'd get the early ferry over to Uig in the Isle of Skye, which would get me there for about 9.30. And at 10.30, I'd take a break in Broadford until 11, where I'd fill up with fuel at the co-op and have a coffee. It's then about two and a half hours to Fort William, where I'd meet up with Crazy Kenny. Hello. Seriously? and take an hour to go and have lunch at the local vegan cafe. Suitably replete, I would then drive about 2 hours 45 minutes to Stirling Services, where last time I had a nice cup of tea with my friends Ali and Amanda. That then leaves the 45 minute drive to my destination Strathclyde Country Park Caravan and Motorhome Club site, arriving at about 6.30pm. Now, using our Skoda Enyaq as an example, this has a claimed range of 300 miles, so for argument's sake, let's say this is 100 miles towing in the real world. The only place I would have range anxiety on this trip would be between Fort William and Stirling Services, which is 99 miles. In this case, I would probably stop at Tyndrum and have a cup of tea at either the Green Welly or the Real Food Cafe, and that would add one stop and about 20 to 30 minutes to the entire journey. Newer and more affordable EVs are limited by their modest towing limits, but even people with more expensive EVs with higher towing limits will be looking for lighter caravans in order to decrease the strain on the battery and improve the range, as will drivers of electric motorhomes. It's not just EVs that are driving the demand for lighter, more affordable leisure vehicles. We're welcoming more and more people than ever into the world of caravanning and motorhoming. And many of these do not have the necessary B plus E license to drive a motorhome or tow a caravan combination in excess of three and a half tons. Historically, used stock has always provided a route for new people to take up caravanning and motorhoming. But thanks to the boom of the staycation, most of that stock is now depleted. We just don't have that fallback anymore. The industry does need to move quickly to avoid a big crash at the end of this boom. For someone buying something like a Skoda Enyaq to only have two UK caravans to choose from is quite poor. So how do we see this change come about? Well, the answer is twofold. One lies with the industry and the other lies with the consumer. For a start, the dealership commission model needs to change industry-wide so that the incentives to sell cheaper and more innovative caravans and motorhomes are similar to those for selling more expensive, heavy and luxurious vehicles. The incentive to switch to the production of lighter and smarter leisure vehicles will not come from membership organisations or from the NCC. That change will only come around if it is market driven, if people like you and I start demanding change. If you want to go caravanning with an EV in the next few years, you're going to have to go back to the 80s. Caravans then were so much lighter, seats became beds, washrooms were simple and they did the job without being the size of Norfolk. Heating was simple and there wasn't such a raft of luxuries on board. We desperately need these simple caravans back and crucially, people need to buy them. Over in Germany, we can already see some prototypes demonstrating great innovation. The Detlef's Coco is already a modern, smart, trendy, lightweight caravan and Detlef's have now gone one further by producing the E-Home, which is a Coco caravan with a powered axle. This reduces the drag on the car and increases its range, not to mention the reassurance of having an additional battery on board. 
So to start wrapping up, if you're currently unprepared to modify your touring behavior, don't worry, all is not lost. It just means that EVs are not for you yet. However, if you are prepared to modify your touring behavior slightly, and you want to enjoy the benefits that EV ownership offers, and you can afford it, remember that something like a Tesla Model X can tow up to 2,250 kilos. So you can switch to EV ownership today and still keep your Airstream or your Buccaneer. But for those of us who can't yet afford that, that's fine because remember, new technology always comes down in price and the towing limits on EVs are of course, over the years, going to increase. Don't forget that the 2030 deadline only applies to the sale of combustion engine vehicles. They will still be in regular use 15 years later in 2045. In other words, we've still got a good 25 years plus of infrastructure supporting internal combustion engine vehicles. And remember, the life expectancy of most vehicles works out to be about 14 years. Basically, if you wish to switch to an affordable EV sooner, not later, and enjoy the benefits it offers, you might need to sacrifice some luxury in your leisure vehicle. The clubs and the site operators are already ahead of the game, but the industry does need to respond if it is to survive and make its products lighter and more innovative. People will be seeking to maximize the range of their EVs, and this means lighter caravans and motorhome bodies. Touring behaviours may have to change, and this includes more stops to use every opportunity to top up the battery. Infrastructure is already changing to make it easier to charge a car with a caravan in tow. In Essex, the first electric forecourt is being developed by a company called GridServe. I expect that as EVs become more popular, fuel stations will eventually be redeveloped to do away with the fuel pumps or replace some of them with drive-through fast chargers instead. So instead of filling up your car or motorhome with fuel when it's empty, you'll just keep topping it up every time you need a break or parking in a supermarket car park. Yes, we will have to change our touring behaviour and we'll have to slow the heck down. But in this crazy, fast, modern world we live in, that's really not such a bad thing, is it? If you are currently considering buying a new motorhome or car and caravan combination and you don't know what to do, should you wait? Well, you could dive straight into EV ownership, enjoy the benefits and accept the limitations that such a decision entails. Or you could make the most of now, buy that combustion engine motorhome or car and caravan outfit you've been dreaming about and just get out there. The infrastructure to support such a purchase will be there throughout the entire life expectancy of the vehicle. As I've said countless times before, Buying a leisure vehicle is not just about money and resale values. It's about adding value to your life, making memories while you still can, and living your dreams while you have the opportunity to do so. Can I wash your windscreen? What about a tip? Hmm? Yes? Yeah? He never smiles. Yes, you could wait for tomorrow, but if the year 2020 has shown us anything, is the fact that you just can't take anything for granted. So while we need to be mindful of tomorrow, the fact remains is today is all we have. Come on, Dukes. For further information about any of the products or services mentioned in this video, please check out the links in the description below. Please note if you're watching this video through a third party platform like social media or on your smart TV, you'll need to go into the YouTube platform in order to access the description with all the links in it. This video has been entirely self-financed and I even switch off the ads during the video to give you a better viewing experience. If you found some value in this video, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already, and share it with your friends. 
If you would like to support the channel and you are in a position to do so, there is a link that will allow you to buy me a coffee in the description below. It just leaves me to say, thanks for tuning in. Thank you.